the Maple Office Hours event. Hello, this is Daniel from MapleSoft, and uh, this is a Maple Office Hours event. Uh, in this uh, session, we'll be talking programming in Maple, and specifically, specifically we will be talking about uh, writing procedures in, in Maple. So, what you've seen in front of you, this is Maple 2017. I'm going to start off in Maple's worksheet mode. So, I've gone here to File, New, Worksheet Mode. Uh, you can press F5 to switch between Math and Text. I'll just be using Maple 1D input for this. So to enter a procedure, which is probably one of the most common things you do when you're programming, you start off by typing something like f, and here we're going to assign something to f, equals proc, and uh, that's it. So this is a new procedure. If I hit return, or actually shift enter, I can close off the end proc here, and I've made a very quick empty procedure. So this, is, this isn't very interesting. It doesn't do anything on its own. What you want to do with a procedure is you want to give it say a, a value x, so this will be our input for our procedure, and if we now do f of 1, this returns nothing. Uh, the reason for this is that we've got this procedure completely empty. There's no return arguments from our procedure. So if we build this out, if we do return, and let's return just our argument x, and I'll use a semicolon to delimit this. If we then use f of 1 again, I get the value back of 1. So simply put, the procedure in this case, all it's doing is it's taking some input and it's doing an operation and it's returning that output from that operation. So in this case, you're inputting x, you're returning the value of x. If we're dealing with, say, numbers, we want to say square root, square them. Let's do x squared here and we'll give it f of 2. This returns 4. So this is just pretty straightforward. It's one of the most common things that we do when we're working in Maple is just make procedures to run commands, to run a sequence of commands, to do something uh, that operates on input or multiple uh, input arguments and gives you something as output. So to motivate this, to give you a better idea of what we can use procedures for, I want to write another procedure, but I want to step you through kind of some of the, uh, the inner workings of the procedure. So let's make a new procedure, and I'm going to make this procedure, we'll call it is even. And this is a kind of a, a very common thing we like to do in Maple, is we want to make sure that our procedure names are, are clearly named so people can understand what they do. So in this case, we want to write a procedure that takes an input and checks if that input is an even or an odd number. So we'll assign to is even a procedure of value x. And if you happen to hit enter now instead of shift enter, you'll actually get a warning from Maple telling you that this is a premature end of input. We have to use shift enter in order to avoid this. And this the reason we're getting that is just because we haven't done an end proc at the end of our procedure. Hitting return there again, it executes the input, doesn't give you back the warning. So again, that's an important part of when we're entering procs in this worksheet mode is we're using shift enter rather than enter. So to make this procedure now, so is even, uh, we want to look at the input x and we want to do some, some conditional logic on it. And in Maple, the way we usually do this is we'll use an if statement. So if we do say an if, and in order to test if this is even, maybe we can do something like x mod 2 is equal to 0. So this is a simple if then statement. And then what we can do is we can return true if this is an even number, else return false, and it's important to close off our if, and then we'll end the proc, here's our procedure, and the way we run a procedure is similar to what we did above, is even two, true, is even three, false. So that's, that's a very simple way, that's really quickly what we do for writing a procedure. Uh, a lot of the languages, or a lot of the commands in the Maple language are, are kind of built in the same way. We're just writing a procedure that takes some input and returns some output. Now as an advanced step, what we can also do is guard against bad input or bad output inside of procedures. So to motivate this, say if we want to 
look here, is even 3.1. That gives us an error message, and the error message is actually coming back from the mod command that we're running here in the if, st if statement step. But that's kind of a little bit bad, right? We want to make sure that we're testing against having input that's invalid within our procedure. And the same thing is true if we do something like a string here. So we'll say, here's a string foo. And again, invalid arguments for mod. So we want to make sure we're doing a little bit better testing within our own procedure. So what we can do instead here is we can go up to procedure x, and then we'll do colon colon, and if we want to look at integers, we'll say, we'll do, maybe we'll just look at positive integers. We'll look at pause int. So that is a type name in Maple. So this is positive integer. And then if we run the same command again here, we get a more detailed error message here. Is even expects the first argument to be of type positive integer, but received foo. So this helps anybody who is using your command too. So if I do 1.3, 3.1, Again, we're expecting this to be of type posint, but received 1.3. So when you're doing this, it's important to have a concept of what types are available within Maple. So if I type in question mark type, you'll see here that the type command lists a number of different defined types within Maple. And these are types that we can set within our procedure argument checking in order to have more detailed error handling as we're starting off a procedure. So again, this is just a very simple example. All we're doing here is we're just doing some, uh, some conditional logic on the arguments that we're supplying, and then we're just returning either true or false depending on the input that we're given it. So once we've done this, the idea is we can just have a procedure that runs on some argument and returns true, false uh, based on the input. So this is one of those building blocks. When you're learning how to program in Maple, uh, using procedures, uh, getting into more advanced conditional logic within the procedures is something that's absolutely essential for you to learn, and it's really going to help you to be able to do a lot of different things within Maple.